so 2017 we end up going to the finals we lose 4-1 for me i made a decision that i was just gonna take my time get some rest enjoy the summer really think about what my future holds and i'm like look man i honestly think i, I need something new I, i'm appreciative of, of winning a championship here i'm one and two in the finals with cleveland you know what I mean? I definitely don't want to leave Bron or Shump or JR or K Love or T Top because I feel like we can go at this thing at least two more years, right? So it was a tough decision. I didn't expect for all of what happened to take place because let me tell you what I got myself into. I ended up going on first take uh, after I asked for a trade, which was, at, in my opinion, at, at this point, when I could look back on it and reflect, I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have gone on first take, bro, because it was a setup. It was a setup. I called them and I said, I called them, by the way, I called them. I called first take. I called first take myself and was like, yo, I'm coming on. They didn't call me. I called them. When I look back on it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it again. So I got on there and that's when I realized that it was just, it was more than just about the business or the game of basketball. It was about pinning two Kings right against each other to make it seem like we hated one another to the point where I didn't I I had to leave or I, I wanted to leave because of some unknown reason that everybody was wondering like was it was it this what was it Braun was it Cleveland was it this was it that no I was like nah bro it was me I, I wanted something new that was on me and what ended up happening after that was after I got off first take it didn't make anything better it just made speculation happen more so when all the speculation happened more, everybody asking questions, that's when they started doing weird shit. When I say they, I mean the media. They started asking people around me what's going on. They started asking people, you know, what does Kyrie think about this? And people started snitching, bro. It was weak. It was weak. He tried to pin me against Bron this whole entire time. Like, oh, man, Kai hates Bron. Bron hates Kai. It was never like that. It was never like that. I repeat, it was never like that. I go back home uh, to Jersey and I, and I just need some time to think and I get a call uh, and they're like look you, you about to film Uncle Drew soon so you got to pack your shit up and you, you about to be in Atlanta for two weeks I mean for two months I filmed Uncle Drew that whole summer I asked when I asked for my trade I'm asking my agent what's going on day to day day to day day to day day to day like yo what's happening what's happening what teams are calling now a few teams called. I'm not going to throw any teams under the bus because I respect the shit out of a lot of organizations. So I'm not going to throw any team under the bus. But Boston called. You know, they were like, hey, you know, we're interested, yada, yada, yada. So I'm like, all right, cool. We could do this. Mind you, what did Boston finish in the rankings or in the, uh, in the standings that year after we lost in the finals? Does anybody remember my series against Boston before I got to Boston? So Boston called and they're like, yo, we're making moves. I said, bet. We draft JT. Jay Tatum, if you don't know who JT is, we got Jalen Brown on the team, we got Marcus on the team, we, we got Al Horford on the team, we, we draft Daniel Tice. Um, so we got a young group, we got other guys on the team, we had Shimmy Ojale, we, we had all these guys, and those are all my brothers, by the way, you know what I mean? I'm not, gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna throw anything but positivity and light those guys' way. But dealing with the business side and seeing what had to happen behind the scenes for me to get traded, that was crazy. I did not expect five players to get traded for me. I did not expect all of this extra hoopla to come out of it, man. I was just expecting for, you know, me to get traded, go to Boston, have a great time, sign a max deal, stay in Boston for at least 10 years and retire. Because I was like, man, let, yo, this this opportunity, I can't throw it off the table. This means a lifetime to me. My mom and my dad met in Boston. I grew up going to boston university camps a celtics fan uh, just from afar you know it was just like a match made in heaven so when i got there man i was so hyped i was so ready for a fresh start i was i was just like man look we're we they finished first last year we just went against them brad stevens is the head coach i feel like I, there's nothing that could go wrong here so 2017 get traded film uncle drew that whole summer get traded to boston bam season starts what happened the first 15 16 games in boston bro Gordon Hayward goes down with one of the worst injuries we have ever seen. He went down with one of the worst injuries we have ever seen. I, I like, I literally saw it happen live it, and I had to say prayers right after that because I think we all felt the air be sucked out of the arena when that happened. It was one of the craziest things I've ever seen. So, boom, that happens game one. We lose Gordon. 
we we spent all the preseason playing together we spent all the preseason getting to know one another bam gordon goes down bam okay cool now who steps up in that jt we all knew jt was nice at duke but do we expect jt to be that nice his rookie year yes i did i knew he was nice i i knew it i i knew jb was nice and when i say jt and jb i'm talking about jason tatum and Jalen brown i knew they were nice did I know Marcus Smart was as great as he is now, like a potential defensive player? There? Absolutely, bro. I saw it every day in practice. I knew how great these guys were and still are to this day. So, Ben, we go through the season. We go on a, what, a 16-game win streak, 15-game win streak. I don't even remember what it is. Everybody was writing us off. We lost our first three games. Oh, my gosh, what's going on with the Celtics? Yada, yada, yada. All right, all right, so fast forward. We go through the 15-game win streak. We end up going like, end up splitting the rest of the games the rest of that season. Around game 60, my knee started acting up. And when my knee started acting up, I had to go back to Cleveland where I got my original surgery to get two screws taken out of my knee. I don't know if anybody in this chat has ever, I don't think it is, I don't think anyone's ever, if you've ever got knee surgery and you have screws put in your knee, you can understand what I'm saying. But if you have not, I'm going to do my best job to uh, explain it to you. I had two screws in my knee with wires tying on in my kneecap. I got that done in 2015 after I went down in the first finals. So fast forward 2018, my knee starts acting up. They take out the wiring. They take out the wiring in my kneecap and they test it for an infection. They take out the wiring. It comes back positive for an infection. I now have to get a pick line going from my bicep all the way to my heart to take antibiotics. I had to, I had a pick line and I still have the scar to this day going straight from my bicep all the way to my heart. It was one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever dealt with. It was one of the most embarrassing things because my daughter's asking me, what is that in my arm? People are asking me like, why are you not going outside? Why can't you do this? Why can't you do that? So not only did I have an infection in my knee, but they had to take out the two screws and I was left with two holes in my kneecaps that I eventually had to fill. But just that traumatic experience alone kept me out of the playoffs. I was going, I was supposed to be back in those playoffs. I was supposed to be back in those playoffs in 2019. When it, when we made it all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals, I was supposed to be back. But because I had an infection in my knee, I couldn't come back. So now they had to take the screws out. And, and this is the and by the way, these are the details the media would never, never, never tell y'all ever because it's all about performance, performance, performance. Oh my gosh, you didn't show up. Oh my gosh, you let your team down. Oh my gosh, you 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 sold on us. Oh my gosh, you let us down. Oh my gosh. And it's like literally I dealt with one of the most traumatic experiences in my life dealing with that knee injury. So bomb, I don't need no sympathy from anybody. I don't. I'm over it at this point. I got through it. But fast forward that summer, I'm coming off knee surgery. I have I have muscle atrophy on my left leg, my quad looks like a small chicken wing bro i have no bounce i have no athleticism i'm slow as shit i'm sitting in bed and i'm just frustrated what led what led uh excuse me what happened after that after i'm sitting at home and i'm dealing with knee surgery i don't know if you've ever been injured if anybody's ever been injured right <laughs> if anybody's ever been injured when you can't walk or you can't do the normal things that you want in life bro that leads to depression bro yeah that leads to depression that leads to mental health issues because when your body and your mind are not in alignment it leads to different issues it leads to different things that you have to deal with so i had to deal with internal stuff so coming into 2019 i'm already feeling like i'm myself but i'm only a, a a shell of myself i'm I, I i am not really expressing how i'm truly feeling so 2019 hits right or 2018 19 season hits we come back we're, we're predict predicted to win the nba championship we're predicted to go far in the finals we're, we're predicted to you know what i mean like win the whole thing like everybody's picking us number one number one number one we have uh i forgot about my boy t-row too scary terry i forgot my boy like we we had marcus morris we had um Aaron Baines, we we had um I don't want to forget anybody either. We we had Shane Larkin uh, uh, on the year before, but and then we got um 
What's my boy's name? Um, I don't want to forget anybody's name. I don't want to forget anybody's name. Uh, what's my boy's name? It's slipping my head. Um, but we had every position that was filled, man. It was supposed to be great. So, boom. I go to um, management in Boston, and I'm like this. This is maybe a week into preseason. I'm like, yo, I'm coming back. <laughs> I'm coming back. <laughs> I'm coming back. That's what I said. I, I told Boston, I'm like, I'm coming back. And the reason why I said I'm coming back is because I had plans up my sleeve, y'all. When I tell you I had plans up my sleeve, I had plans up my sleeve. I'm not going to tell y'all who I had in mind or what trade was going to happen because that will lead to speculation. But I, I had plans up my motherfucking sleeve. I was like, bro, I'm coming back coming back to Boston if y'all have me I made sure it's like if y'all have me I'm coming back so I'm hyped I say it in front of the Boston crowd I say it in front of everybody I tell my teammates right I'm like I'm coming back I'm, I'm signing this deal and I only said it at that time because I was sure I was certain I was happy I'm like yo this is about to be the greatest day of my life after the season is done I'm about to sign whatever the, the shit is right right you know what I mean it's not so much about the money per se uh, I want to make sure my family's taken care of but I was literally happy being able to get that off my chest so I didn't have to answer any free agency questions right and a week later after I, I I'm, I'm living out a dream you know what I'm saying I'm, I'm happy as ever a week later my grandfather passes he transitions my grandfather transitions and it's one of the hardest bit of news I could take in my life because you know that that man definitely inspired me beyond um, words you know what I mean like like he really he really impacted my life in, in very positive ways and um you know it's still hard for me to even talk about but my grandfather passing after that i felt like i was letting a lot of my family members down because i was spending a, a lot more time dedicating myself to being great in the game but i wasn't spending enough time being a great family member and probably some of y'all don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. And this message will go over your head. And you know what I mean? This shit will end up going viral tomorrow, right? But honestly, it was never just about Boston. It was never about, um, you know what I mean? Like trying to make sense of a decision I made a week prior to that. All I could do is be there for my family. And like like again i don't i don't really need sympathy y'all i appreciate the support but i had to get through it and um when i uh yeah when i uh had to deal with that i don't know if anybody's ever had to deal with losing a loved one um but you go through different stages of grief and guess what i had to go through Guess what I had to go through uh, in front of the in front of the public eye, me grieving. So I'm angry, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm depressed. Uh, I'm over here dealing with real life grief. I, I cried, you know, about me about losing my grandfather, bro. And you don't that like you you control and hate all you want, but it's just real shit that goes on in life where because. I'm in the public eye. I'm, I can't escape having human emotions. Like somehow y'all motherfuckers think that we robots out here and that we we don't feel feelings. Like and we don't go through real life circumstances, but we still have to go out and perform. So my grandfather transitions, and then after that we go out on a West Coast trip, and um, I go to his memorial, and I end up playing a game that next day. And when I tell you that for the rest of the season, I wasn't really myself, I, I definitely wasn't. And I wasn't having fun playing basketball as much anymore. And, and that started to spill over into 
our team goals you know what i mean and and i'm definitely definitely not ever a person that comes in and says look at me look at me what's going on i'm just real and when i look back on it would i have done things differently absolutely would i have done things differently absolutely did i have to learn from my mistakes in the public eye absolutely that I have to deal with the consequences of going throughout the season and then making a decision to go back home and be with my family? Absolutely. But let me tell you about the positives. Let me tell you about the positives that end up happening. I learned how to cope with grief. I learned how to cope with myself going through depression i learned how to go seek out help from family members i learned how to make connections stronger i learned how to admit to being wrong in situations where you know you feel justified to be right but really you just got to move on in life you know you just got to put one step in front of the other that though those are some of the positives and the other positives are i really learned more about myself and and what makes me motivated every day to get up because if if any of y'all know anybody that's dealt with losing a loved one you can deal with suicidal thoughts you feel me you can you can deal with suicidal thoughts and th that's just one of the things of grief like you don't want to live here anymore on this earth and that's the realness of life you feel me that nobody wants to talk about <clears throat> and, and it's not it don't don't and by the way don't come at don't come at the fan base either don't come at their fan base it's all good let 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 that let that rock you know what i mean um because i'll get that in a minute but throughout that season 2018 2019 i'm dealing with all this we end up going into the first round against the pacers um and we go into the second round against the against the bucks and it was just a it was just a different level bro it was a different level of physicality it was a different level of focus and us as a team we were still really young we were only in our second year together if if we all stayed together for five six seven years then i'm pretty sure that uh, you know who, who knows y'all can speculate what would have happened but that didn't you know what i mean we we had two sm small years together and I'm and I'm judged based on two years of being with a team and then leaving that team to go to my hometown to play and all of the speculation all the shit that gets thrown uh, on my name I feel like again people just hide their hand all the time so I had to learn a lot once I left um, that point in my career being in Boston taught me a lot um, I definitely dealt with a lot of, uh, shall I say, overt and over-the-top racism even being a player in Boston. I'm not saying that Boston's racist. Don't ever fucking quote me in saying that shit. All I'm saying is that the reality of the situation is I dealt with a lot of shit that I never talked about because if I wasn't performing up to their standards or expectations, let's just say words were flying everywhere. You know what I mean? And then on top of that, the way that they were treating other teams and not just in basketball, but in other sports and other entertainment venues, it got to be too much. And, and I couldn't I couldn't defend that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say that it, it was it, I'm not going to say that it was comfortable for me, bro, because it really wasn't. It was very uncomfortable for me. So towards the end of the season, it just got worse and worse and worse and worse. And then, um, you know, I had to make a move to go back home and be with my family. And that's what it is. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I don't have to say and repeat some of these things. I don't. Because all of this that I'm talking about is really my perspective. Other people may have a different perspective, right? But if you weren't in our locker room and if you weren't in our day to day, you really don't know what the fuck was going on. You really don't. 
You really don't. If you weren't there every day, if you weren't in our practices, if you weren't in our team meetings, you really don't know what the fuck going on. So when I'm telling you my perspective, you don't have to respect it. You don't have to agree with it. You can criticize it. You can judge it. But this is my perspective, and this is what it is. So going from Cleveland, I told y'all from 2017, getting traded to Boston, going from Boston and being a free agent, my <laughs> my journey, it, <laughs> let's just say injuries, losing loved ones, it, it shifted me into a whole different um, path. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't expect my grandfather to pass during the year where I, I've I've committed to Boston for five plus years, and then I lose him, and then I go through some of the worst mental health crises in my life. You know what I mean? I'm I'm dealing with real life issues because I didn't know how to deal with grief. Being in Cleveland, being injured, you know what I mean? Being with one of the greatest to ever play the game, and wanting respect from my peers, and wanting to go out and start something new. I didn't know it was going to come with all that, bruh. But it did. But it did. And it only got me stronger. It only got me stronger. It only made me stronger, bruh. That's what I'm trying to share with y'all. Like, let all the people talk and do that. But their journeys are not a reflection of anything close to what I've been through. And I don't say that as if we're not living a similar, you know what I mean, a life that is normal. But... I'm dealing with this on a public stage. You feel me? I'm dealing with this in the in the public eye. That's like one of the weirdest things. I'm doing this shit in public. So if you waking up every day and, and people are like studying your life and observing your life in the way where it's just like, bro, I'm I'm human, like I'm going through shit right now. And it's like, you know what I mean? I hope y'all can understand. It's like, nah, we don't understand. Nah, fuck that. You, you're supposed to still be, you know what I mean? Nah, fuck that. Fuck that. <laughs> I'm like, bro, chill. Chill. Chill out. Chill out, bro. Chill out. So, the last five years for me have been like dealing with what is preparing me for the next few chapters of my life because the next five years I guarantee they won't be like these the, the last five years you can have all the, the oh Kai you got a uh, second round exit in the playoffs man uh, you got swept by Boston this year man you uh you you you're not you're not who you once was man you're not you're not this like I'm keep that same energy bro you you make it greater for redemption to happen Y'all make it greater, bruh. And then on top of that, all the supporters and love that I get outweighs and outshines all of the negativity. I promise you. So when I address the negativity, y'all have to because I'm being funny. I troll that shit. All right. It's funny to me. It's just the airy speaking to me. Right? It's the airy speaking to me, bruh. It's the airy speaking to me. So. Y'all gotta let me talk my ish sometimes, but to all the people that love and support and get inspiration, not only from me, but from other great individuals, I'm, I'm, I'm with y'all. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm grateful that I could do this in public because I'm just showing y'all that they throw a whole bunch of shit and try to hide their hand. So whenever you get successful or whenever you're on some type of trajectory towards greatness, people are always going to be part of that demise. You know what I mean? Always try to break your foundation, but the but paying attention to the people that genuinely love and support you really gets you through. You know what I mean? Because I, I don't I don't walk around alone ever. I don't ever feel alone ever. And I, I felt most alone when I was dealing with some of the things I was dealing with in the last five years. You know what I mean? I felt like, damn, who can I really turn to? And when I found that, that system, bam, I end up in Brooklyn. Me and Kay get together. We rocking out. We mobbing out. We go to Brooklyn, we shake the whole world up. We're like, yo, fuck this, it's, it's me and you. You know what I mean? We doing this shit together. Um, but even in that sense, like me and him had to grow uh, in, in, a, in the most beautiful way because like you, you look at his journey, you look at my journey, man, like I, I don't remember dealing with as much shit as I dealt with <laughs> in like 2013, 14. What what are y'all spamming in here, bro? <laughs> Yo, 
Yo, bro, chill, bro. Stop talking down on people's names, bro, in the chat, bro. Y'all gotta chill. I'll be honest with you, I don't feel the same way some of y'all feel about teams, players. When y'all be saying all that disrespectful shit, bro, y'all can miss me with that. I don't I don't go behind people's I don't go behind people's backs and be like yo oh man that that guy fucking sucks nah bruh I don't do that I don't go on social and be like nah that guy fucking sucks nah bro I don't do that I'm getting too disrespectful on, on people's sacrifice and hard work and what they do to grind and, and we need more appreciation and giving flowers to to people that that show up you know on on whether it be the highest pressure situations bro